Greetings, Nick with Sweetwater here, and today we're going to be taking a quick look at this little beauty over here, the Friedman Mini BE 30 Watt Guitar Amp. <laughs> here does exactly what its name suggests. It delivers the same British style harmonic grind that's made its much bigger brother, the BE100, a go-to amp for many rock guitar players. And don't let its compact size fool you either. It might look cute, but it's anything but a toy. Housed in a sturdy wooden box, the Mini BE packs a deadly punch and it doesn't do clean either. Not at all. Not even a tiny smidgen. No sir, this little guy delivers nothing but dirt. The desirable kind, of course. Think ACDC to Alice in Chains and beyond. <laughs> In a few minutes, I'm going to turn this over to the amp's creator, Dave Friedman, who can take you through the full story. First though, let's take a quick look at the front and rear panels of this bad boy, hear a few more sounds, and then it's Dave time, my friend. Dave time. As you probably know, this is a 30 watt head. It's also solid state. There's no tubes lurking at all. Not even one. Don't worry about that though, because as you've already heard, the Mini BE still has that all-important Friedman DNA. Dave Friedman is deservedly famous for producing all tube tone machines, the man is no slouch when it comes to making great sounding and feeling solid state devices, such as the BEOD Deluxe for example. This box can transform the meekest amp into a fire breathing monster and it's one of my favourite amps in a box out there right now. <laughs> The Mini BE's no-nonsense front panel has all the controls you'd expect, namely the usual suspects. Master volume, bass, middle, treble, presence and gain. It also has two three-way mini toggle switches. <laughs> Sloppy lead playing out of the way, let's get back to those all important switches. The first one going from left to right is labelled cut and it adjusts the range of the gain plot. The other toggle switch is labelled tight and varies the low frequencies, just like the same labelled switch on the BEOD Deluxe. As for the rear panel, it's got two speaker outputs plus an input for the amp's universal power supply. It also has send and return jacks for the amp's excellent series effects loop. And that's where I've put my reverb pedal, once again to cover some of my slop. <laughs>
Anyway, enough of my nonsense. As promised, let's jump into my Zoom call with Mr. Dave Friedman himself so he can tell us all about his creation. Dave, thanks for taking the time. How are things your end? Everything good? Oh yeah, absolutely. We've been uh, we've been crazy busy. It's ama it's amazing how after all this year has gone, you know, how this year has gone that we are crazy busy, and I'm sure you are too. Yep. No, it's funny, and it, thank goodness I would say to that. But we're here to discuss this this fine mini be, which is a what's that? I don't know. It's a form of, <laughs> someone's used your name if you don't recognize it. So my first, my first and most obvious question is, what led you to make this and what was your mission statement? All right, well, here's the thing. So I always wanted to make something that is like, uh, well, it's, it's sort of a practice amp, but it's a little more functional than that. Um, it's a little amp and it was very important for me to do a wood head box with it. So, um, so as you see on this amp, uh, it's a, it looks like a bigger amp, you know, it has the wood head box and it's kind of the cute factor, you know? So people just see it and they're just like, I got to buy it. You don't care what it sounds like. You just see it and you go, I have to have it because it's awesome. <laughs> guilty as it's judged. Little, it's tiny and it's, I got to have it. Yeah. Guilty as judged. But it feels like you're right. Like having the wood box makes it feel like it doesn't feel like it's a plastic flimsy toy. It feels like a mini, it feels like what it says it is. What a concept. Exactly, exactly. And I didn't I didn't want it to be the flimsy little toy, you know. It it is quite useful though because it, it it's a 30 watt amp. Yeah, and the thing that surprised me is that it's one well, didn't so I ex would expect nothing less from you after hearing like these like the BEOD and the BEOD Deluxe are both really really good. You managed to capture the the harmonic content and the punch of the head, which is not easy to do in a pedal form. Now, did building these help you in making this, or did you start from scratch? No, no, uh, it, it's a derivative of the pedal circuits, um, and uh, with a very certain Class D power amp that we use, that we like, and uh, it came out, you know, we wanted something super light, super easy, uh, just, uh, you know, a, just a cool looking little thing, you know. And it's got surprising punch because one of the things that's often disappointing with an amp that says it's 30 watts, certain non-tube non amps and, and certain tube amps for that matter that say 30 watts are kind of puny sounding, but I've cranked this sucker. This is loud. It's it's quite loud. It's it's actually shockingly loud. Yeah. Uh, it, it can, it can be very quiet too, but it can, it can pump out. So like, if, you know, if you were to carry this around, even if you were doing a, a gig and you had some sort of failure or something, you, you might be able to just totally get by with this little amp as a backup. Yeah, no, it's a good little like uh -huh. backup, as you said, like to have in your back pocket yeah. and, and also to have it backstage and, you know, as your warm up amp as well. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And the, but the power amp, the thing that surprised, I know it's, I figured it would be class D because of the, of, of the weight and the size but mm -hmm. it doesn't feel sterile. How did you manage to do that? Or would you have to tell me and then kill me if um, you revealed the secret? Well, you know, it, it's, um, we discovered a certain class D amp that we kind of liked that was for class D was rather tube like, so to speak. And also the pedals, generally speaking, the front end of this amp is also very, you know, harmonic capturing the harmonic content of kind of the amp for the, for the most part. Now you do have to remember that this is not the amp. It's not the big boy. Um, uh, you know, I always had to keep like, well, hold on a second. This thing sounds great. Remember that it's, <laughs> you know, it it still is your your little little amp. You know, it's you're not going to replace the tube amp, but this is a killer little amp, and um, that's really what I wanted to do. And I didn't want to make it look like a plastic toy. Now, I like the way you kept the front panel just like the like its big brother, like the all tube, all singing, all dancing BE, like the usual suspects gain the volume, bass, middle, treble, presence. Um, are the tone controls active or passive on this? Well, um, it's it's taken from the pedal, so um, so the mid control is it's active and passive. Uh, the mid control is a, a mid boost; it's an active mid. Right. Uh, so like on a BEOD. Uh, this mid off would be what a BEOD is. The bass control is a boost also. Same thing on the pedal. The treble control is subtractive. 
and the presence control is sort of subtractive also. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's derived from the pedal circuits. Gotcha, so. yeah, so... And then tweaked tweaked for the power amp in there a little bit. Gotcha, gotcha. And I like the way that even though it's relatively simple, you've got those, th like, you've got the, uh, like you've got the gain and also the tight switches. Could you quickly run us through what they do starting with the, um, with the, with the gain cut, like the three positions? Sure, the gain cut is just to be able, be able to, it's sort of like our gain structure structure on all of our amps, it, it just allows you uh, to lower the gain structure of the amplifier. Um, so if you're going for more of a classic rock kind of thing, you can, you know, drop the gain structure a little bit and, uh, you know, back off the gain knob. You mostly hear it, if you turn, like, say, your gain knob to half on this amp and then switch through that switch, you're going to really hear what the gain switch is doing. When you're really dimed out in the gain, it's still doing something, but it's harder to hear. Right. Um, so it's kind of good to set it at first like at half and then uh, just adjust it and go, okay, I want the lower gain setting, and then I'll crank it up to where I need it to be. Gotcha. Um, and the same goes for the other switch. The other switch is a, kind of a, a high-pass filter, uh, which we have on the pedals. So it's like a, a three-position tight switch, so one-position you know, a lot of low ends cut out and other positions are fatter. I find if you're using it lower gain, you probably want that on the fatter position. If you're using it at a high gain, more metal kind of thing, you want it on the tightest position. So, and then you got in between. Gotcha. So, depends Perfect. on the guitar, depends on the guitar, cabinet, and everything else you're playing. Gotcha. Now, you make it very, last question, and thanks for taking the time to do this. You make it very clear in the manual that forums is a no no because it could be dangerous. Um, it has two outputs. Um, do you get the maximum 30 by using one eight ohm or two sixteen ohm cabs, or is there a different law there? Well, I mean, you get the maximum 30 by using an eight ohm load. So, um, I mean, it, it will function on four ohms. It's just that if you crank it, you'll hear the power amp go into kind of a shutdown mode. I mean, like, and I'm talking about really loud. Uh, you know, if you have it at seven or something and, uh, you know, it's actually fine. It, it will work at four ohm, but it's, it's ideally suited for eight and 16 ohms. Right. No, but and like, you still get a lot of output at 16. Right. Gotcha. But, but for the max 30, eight's the way to go. Correct. But you're still getting really healthy. If you plug that into a four by 12 and crank it up at 16, you'll see. <laughs> <laughs> who would you say this last question I, I lied to you before so who would you say this amp is for well it might be for a guy that has bought pedals and can't afford my amps and they might want just something at home and they just want something to mess around with it's for someone that owns my amps and wants this cute little tiny baby version <laughs> uh, maybe they take it to their office or something and you know they have it in the corner or something right maybe they have it by the TV set you know to play through um uh, most most of the response of people that already own my amps go, oh, I I, I don't care what it sounds like. I just have to have it because it's really cute. <laughs> you know, they really they just tight. Look at this tiny thing. I want it. <laughs> gotcha. Perfect. Well, Dave, thank you so much for taking the time. Congratulations. I'm sure this is going to be a big hit, as is oh, your yeah. other stuff. And um, look forward to seeing you in person once this pandemic thing is finally over. Yes, that would be great. And there you have it, my friend, the Friedman Mini BE 30 Watt Guitar Head. It sounds great, it's fun to play, and gosh darn it, as Dave said, it's cute. Really cute, as weird as that might sound. It's a guitar head, and I'm saying it looks cute. But admit it, you want one, don't you? I know I certainly do. Before I sign off, though, I should quickly tell you about the cabinet I'm plugged into. It's a Friedman 1x12 Runt Cab, and it's loaded with a Celestian Creamback. For more information on the Friedman Mini BE, go to sweetwater.com or better still, call your sales engineer and he or she will be only too glad to guide you through everything you need to know. That said, I'm out. See ya. Thank you so very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Click here for more videos like this or start at sweetwater.com for all your music instrument and pro audio needs.